Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is EPA 608 study guide resources, including some of the newer refrigerants that are included in the EPA 608 test. We're going to also be going over toxicity, flammability, regulations, GWP, ODP, and responsibilities. So this is mainly going to cover some of the questions uh, that are on the core. The test is made up of the core, type 1, type 2, and type 3, in order to buy refrigerants and also service systems that have refrigerant in them. For more information, check out epa.gov slash section 608. So in section 608 of the Clean Air Act, refrigerants can only be sold to technicians that are EPA 608 certified. It also prohibits the knowing release of refrigerants into the atmosphere. Technicians must be 608 certified before handling refrigerants. Recovery equipment must be certified by an EPA approved testing organization. Systems with 50 pounds or more refrigerant are subject to leak repair requirements. It requires record keeping of dates, charge amounts, service, and disposal on larger equipment. It requires the last person in the disposal chain to be responsible for the proper disposal, including refrigerant recovery. Reclamation requires testing the ARI 700 purity standards before being resold and required vacuum levels must be followed during recovery and pump downs on equipment. So some of the older refrigerants had ODP and GWP. So ODP is ozone depletion potential and GWP is global warming potential. So ozone depletion potential occurs due to the chlorine in the refrigerant being released into the atmosphere. One chlorine atom can destroy 100,000 O3 molecules. The ozone molecule is made up of O3, and the stratosphere is made up of O3 molecules and other gases. So GWP, once again, is global warming potential, and GWP's main contributor in the refrigerant is the fluorine. So because of that, the Montreal Protocol was an international agreement for the phase-out of CFC and HCFC refrigerants, which both led to ozone depletion potential as well as the global warming potential. And the Kyoto Protocol was an international agreement to reduce greenhouse gases, which included the refrigerants with GWP. SNAP was a significant new alternatives policy program in the United States for identification and evaluation of new refrigerants. SNAP uses certain rules to list determinations on refrigerants into one of these four following categories. Acceptable, non-acceptable, acceptable to use conditions, and acceptable subject to narrowed use limits. So in order to handle refrigerants properly, we need to make sure that we're not releasing the refrigerants into the atmosphere, so we recover the refrigerant, which is taking the refrigerant out of the system and putting it into a recovery bottle. Recycling is to partially clean a refrigerant by running it through multiple filter dryers for reuse. And reclaiming happens back at the manufacturer or the factory in order to clean a refrigerant and bring it back to ARI 700 standards for purity in order for reuse or resale. Now we're going to get into the refrigerants themselves. CFC refrigerant was one of the first refrigerants that was developed to have a low toxicity. So that is chlorofluorocarbon, and that was developed right around 1928 and went into large-scale commercial use in the 1930s. It's made up of chlorine, fluorine, and carbon, has the highest ozone depletion potential, and also contributes to global warming. Some examples of CFC refrigerant are R12, R11, and R500. HCFC refrigerant is hydrochlorofluorocarbon, and that's made up of hydrogen, chlorine, fluorine, and carbon. That has the second highest ODP, and also contributes to global warming. Some examples are R22, which was widely used in residential commercial air conditioning and also refrigeration, and then also R123, and that was a retrofit for R11 and R113 for chillers. HFC refrigerants were developed in order to be used instead of refrigerants that had chlorine in them. So if it doesn't have chlorine, then it doesn't have any ozone depletion potential, so hydrofluorocarbon was developed. So that's made up of hydrogen, fluorine, and carbon. So that has no ODP, but it does have a global warming potential, and in some cases a very high global warming potential. Some well-known examples are R134i, which is used in automobiles and also in refrigeration, and R410a, which is used in residential and commercial air conditioning systems. HFO refrigerants were developed in order to reduce greenhouse gases, and they differ from HFCs due to the double bond and that helps them break down in the atmosphere faster than HFC refrigerants. So an HFO refrigerant is hydrofluoroolefin, and it's made up of hydrogen, fluorine, and carbon. So these refrigerants have no ozone depletion potential, they have a low global warming potential. Some examples are R1234YF, which is used in automotive industry as a retrofit for R134A, and then R1234ZE, which is primarily used in chillers and commercial refrigeration. An HC refrigerant is hydrocarbon, 
and that's made up of hydrogen and carbon. It is a natural refrigerant, though highly flammable. It's in the A3 safety classification, but it does have zero ODP and very low GWP. Some examples are R290, which is propane. R290 can be used in applications that already use R22. Now, R290 cannot be used as a retrofit refrigerant for R22 due to its high flammability, but it can be used in commercial industrial applications uh, where the proper safety controls are in place. And R600A continues to be used more and more in domestic refrigeration systems that need a very low refrigerant charge. Natural refrigerants have no ODP, so they range from very low to no global warming potential, and they also vary greatly in flammability and toxicity. So this category of natural refrigerants includes HC refrigerants as well as other natural chemicals. So some examples are R744, which is carbon dioxide, and that has zero ODP, it's non-flammable, it's non-toxic, has a safety group of A1, and presently Section 608 certification is not needed in order to purchase R744 refrigerant. R717 is ammonia, and that has zero ODP, it's slightly flammable, it's toxic, has a safety group of BL2, and safety precautions should be taken due to the toxicity. R290 is propane that has zero ODP, it's highly flammable, it's non-toxic, it's an HC refrigerant, the safety group is A3, recovery is not required, and safety caution should be taken due to the flammability. This restricts where R290 could be installed at. And here's a refrigerant safety group chart. As you move to the right, you see A is non-toxic and then B is toxic. And as you move down, you see one starts as non-flammable, two is slightly flammable, three is lower flammability, and four is higher flammability. So we said R290 is non-toxic, but it is highly flammable, and that's why it has a refrigerant safety group of A3. We also said that ammonia is toxic, and it's slightly flammable, and that's why it has a B2L rating. And if you're looking for any other study resources for the EPA 608 certification, I have them linked down in the description below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.